What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Splatter Talk with your boys, Jay and my brother, Sam. Bringing you some reviews of a classic horror film called Creep Show 2. This movie is a story by Stephen King come to life. The movie was originally scripted for about five short segments, like its predecessor, but only filmed three due to budget issues. With all that out the way, let's dive right into it. The movie opens on a quiet street in the town of Maine. With a Maine license plate which reads Creep, the delivery truck stops to make its delivery to a newsstand. Right beside the stand, a young Billy sits on his bike waiting for what the driver has as cargo. The driver sees the kid and they exchange words. When the package is thrown, the movie turns into an animation. The kid flips through the book. And I must admit that the animation, when he starts flipping through the book, it looks like a comic, but the credits are rolling. That looks pretty good. It's showing you scenes of uh, what's going on in the movie. But you don't know that, so spoiler. Anyway. After the credits, we go to the creeper as he sits in his den cracking puns and quips while introducing us to the first story. Old Chief Woodenhead. The story opens with store owner Ray tending to his wooden Indian in front of the store singing Jimmy Cracked Corn. Jimmy Cracked Corn and I don't care. Jimmy Cracked Corn and I don't care. Jimmy Cracked Corn and I don't care. As long as I'm drinking Jimmy's Cracked Corn. <laughs> Ray's pessimistic wife Martha comes out and shits on the whole town that they live in. This store, Ray, at one time sat in the middle of a thriving young town that seemed to have a future to it. Look at it now. The town of Dead River is finally living up to its name. Damn, she's such a bitch. Ray's kind. He's an optimistic old man who helps the town's men and women out with credit to his store. The Indian chief, Ben comes to the store and gives Ray and Martha the Elene, jewelry from his people as collateral for the debts that they owe. It honestly looks like Chief Ben got two dollars and quarters and racked up at the bubblegum machine at Walmart. After getting these things, Martha starts to become nice, old gold digging bitch. And later that night, Ray and Martha get robbed by Fatso, Rich Boy, and Ben's nephew, Sam White Moon. They torment the elderly couple with trashing the store and taking anything they could. When there was nothing left and Sam's narcissistic ass was done taking pictures which probably turned out looking like shit because he was talking through the whole thing. He tells the store owners to give him the Elene. Ray tries to talk him out of it but in return sees his bitch wife shot with a gun that should have cut her ass in half. Sam goes on to shoot poor old Ray. After this, the robbers go to the one place where the police would never find them. They go home. Fatso sits in his recliner watching the Cisco Kid and gets brutally shot down with three arrows. At Andy's, I mean Rich Boy's house, his family's watching the same damn show on TV. Ain't none of these assholes got cable? Rich Boy goes out to his car to get ready to leave when he's killed by a silhouette of an Indian. We finally go to Sam White Moon's house where he is narcissistically talking about himself while the same movie's playing in the background. He is greeted by a wooden Indian and decides to shoot at it. He runs into the bathroom and smashes out the window to escape, 
But it's too late. Old Chief Woodenhead bursts through the wall and grabs his egomaniac ass and kills him off camera. We cut to the next day. Chief Ben drives up to the store and sees the blood scalp of long black hair in the wooden Indian's hand. He looks up and says, Now, may your spirit rest, old warrior. Akkoane. What? That was the first of three segments in the Creep Show movie, Old Chief Woodenhead. I must say, I did kind of like this one. My boy Sin really doesn't like it, so he didn't want to review it, but I did. I kind of liked the story. I mean, it's a story of revenge. I mean, how could you kill off the store owner, Ray? I mean, you could have killed his bitch wife. Who gives a shit about that? But when you killed Ray, Chief Woodenhead was on that ass. So the next up, I'm going to let my boy Sin go ahead and take care of the next one entitled The Raft. We start the second story off with two couples of irritating ass college kids on their way to a lake in the mountains. Their names are Randy, Rachel, Deke, and Laverne. But Deke continuously calls Randy Poncho for some reason, so that's what I'm going to call him too. They smoke a joint as Poncho assures the group that a raft will be on the lake for them to spend the day on. They pull up to find that no other people are at the lake to swim. Considering it's mid-September and the water is 45 degrees, I'm not fucking surprised. So they start to swim out to the raft, leaving the car radio blasting by the way, and Poncho sees a duck getting pulled under the water in the distance. After the guys make it to the raft, Poncho notices a trash bag or something floating towards them and yells for the girls to swim faster in the laziest way possible. The bird Rachel swim! Come on! Laverne, swim faster! Laverne, come on! Swim faster! Randy, come on! Don't tip the raft. Come on, Rachel. <laughs> Don't tip the raft. Don't tip the raft, baby. While this bitch is doggy paddling, everyone's half assing it. The mysterious blob just misses Laverne's feet as they pull her up. They smoke another joint that Deke was saving in his speedo this whole time, I guess, and discuss what this thing is. This is where all these characters really start to get irritating for me. Rachel kneels down on the edge of the raft and starts to smile at the blob, dipping her fingers and the joint into the slime. Fucking party foul. So a prop guy's arm with shit on it grabs her and pulls her overboard into the mess. So yeah, it eats her. They all start to freak out and Deke thinks this is a good time to threaten to punch his girlfriend in the face. Oh, I hope he survives. So the blob sneaks under the raft, pushes its way through the boards, and destroys this asshole's leg. Taint. This scene does not make sense. Now it's just Pancho and Laverne left, and all they do is sit around and freeze until the next morning. These ever-growing dumb shits end up falling asleep in the fall mountain cold with a blob monster stalking them. Pancho wakes up acting like he slept fine and is ready for some coffee. Lays Laverne down, then proceeds to... Oh... Oh... Well, oh, damn... Ah... <sighs> He proceeds to molest her in her sleep. Yeah, it turns out he's not the only thing molesting her while she slept. She gets pulled off the raft screaming for this fucking creep to save her, but Pancho finally tries to make a break for it while Laverne's skeleton pops up to say goodbye. After a quick chase, Pancho makes it to the shore and taunts the trash bag. 
Not taking none of that shit, it creates a wave and snatches him back into the water. As the camera pans from the lake, we see a sign hidden behind some trees that says, No Swimming. Damn, that car must have a good battery in it. Alright, let's get on to the third story in Creepshow 2, entitled, The Hitchhiker. This story opens with some good old-fashioned hot and steamy, I gotta pay for some dick adultery. Apparently, this married woman had fallen asleep by getting the meat slam to her and wakes up hours later and late for her return home. After some, you wouldn't know what to do without this dick talk from a personal gigolo, she reminds them that if it wasn't for her husband, the gigolo wouldn't get the money for his Mercedes. That's so fucked up. This bitch deserves to have a fucking head chopped off. She goes to the car, soaking wet, and gets in. She drives down the road, talking to herself in the most annoying way possible. This is Annie Lansing, winner of the 100 yard dash, an attempt to do the impossible. 20 miles in seven minutes, Jesus, that really is impossible. They go through too much dialogue about being late in this movie. She ends up with different excuses until she admits to herself. I went to get laid, George. There's this wonderful guy. He charges $150, but that's for six. Count them, six orgasms. She drops her cigarette, freaks out trying to get it, and ends up hitting a hitchhiker on his way to Dover. She gets out to check on the man and sees he's not moving, then gets back in the car and drives off. Vehicular homicide, bitch. Hit and run, fleeing the scene. That's three felonies, Mrs. Lansing. Civilians stop at the scene and all talk about the accident. Stephen King makes his typical cameo in the good adaptation of his book turned to a movie. She continues to drive and comes up with excuses as to why she hit the man and why she fled the scene. She gets off on exit 3, drives a little bit and stops. She looks in her rear view to see the hitchhiker waving her down. She turns around to clear her head. She turns back around to nothing. After telling herself that she can't handle what she did, jump scare, the hitchhiker pops up and says, How you doing, lady? Thanks. Thanks for the ride. What ride? What are you thanking her for? The last ride that you'll ever take? What fucking ride? The story goes on with her driving away from the bloodiest hitchhiker in the world and pops up out of nowhere saying, Thanks for the ride, lady! Thanks for the ride! This bitch puts his ass through so much shit. She brought his ass through the woods on top of the car until she low bridges him. After she stops, of course, he comes after her again and she shoots him four times then drives over the poor bastard twice. She even drives with his ass on the bumper of the car until she drives off-road right into a tree several times. She finally makes it home after killing this asshole about three different times. She pops into the garage, opens the door to get out, and guess what? He's like, <laughs> we cut to later. Where her husband comes home, probably out fucking too. I mean, what lawyer works until 1 a.m.? He goes into the garage to see his wife dead with a Dover sign on her chest. The end. Wait, how the fuck did she die? All right, guys, that is Jay and Sin with their review of Creep Show 2. Thank you guys for tuning in. I like this movie for the most part. For what it was in the 1980s, Creep Show was really good. Creep Show 2 is even better. And they came out with a Creep Show 3 in 2006, but um, I think that was like a straight to DVD, probably a straight to TNT movie. But nevertheless, I haven't seen it, and it might be reviewed later on on Splatter Talk. 
But anyway, if you like what you see, continue to come back to Splatter Talk and uh, watch some of the reviews. If you don't, hey, continue to come back to Splatter Talk because you might find the movie that you like and you might like that review. So leave your comments down below. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and put a like on the video. And we will be back at you with a lot more. Holla at your boys. Cut.